Welcome everyone to another episode. I'm Omberus and usually I'd be talking about video game development, software engineering and stuff like that. But this week I'm here as a YouTuber, as a newbie that doesn't have much experience and I want to share with you my last six months experience with NLE or Nonlinear Editor or as you might call them, uh, editing software for videos. And um, the reason I want to do that is because I thought because everyone is making videos on YouTube nowadays, it would be something very easy to figure out. But surprisingly, I had a lot of trouble when I started finding what's the best software to use. And as a kind of hobby, I wasn't ready to fork like $400 for professional suits of editing software. And of course, when you look online, most famous YouTubers are using something like Adobe Premiere Pro or something. but I wasn't ready to jump into this kind of uh, professional editing software. I wanted something simple just to make some simple cuts on my uh, videos. And in, in the last six months, I've actually tried three different software to make my uh, videos. And right now I'm using DaVinci Resolve. And honestly, I think it's the best solution. But I'm going to talk to you guys through the process of how I got to this point. So the first thing I did when I started is uh, I look up information on Google and the first suggestion that came up from Google was this uh, Shotcut. Uh, Shotcut is a free open source nonlinear editing software and uh, as an open source project I think it's very promising and I like open source in general and I like free, so I thought I'd give it a try. So the first couple of videos, maybe the first five or six videos I made were edited using uh, Shotcut. And honestly, it does the job all right. I've done quite a bunch of stuff. I mean, you can cut your videos, you can uh, move them around, of course, you can move your clips around, you can insert multiple clips, you can stack them, you can generate, you know, background colors. Uh, do keyframe animation, add text, even HTML and CSS to ma really make your uh, text animated or stuff like that. And honestly, it's pretty powerful as an open source solution. My big problem with it and the reason I stopped using it altogether is because twice it completely corrupted my save game. And I'm not talking about like, you know, I can't load my save or something like that. I'm saying it was just completely a huge mess. I had all these perfect cut, all these sections that I'd been working on for like maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and then everything seemed fine. It, it, it didn't even, the, the software didn't even crash or anything. But when I opened my save game, all the uh, idzits were all everywhere, all over the place. There was some idzit missing, some idzit were not at the right place, or the idzits that were cutting like a clip in the middle were now like at the beginning of the clip or something like that. And I, I just lost literally an hour and a half twice using this. And uh, when you look on the forums, when you search information about this, uh, everyone is saying that this used to be a problem, but it's now been fixed and there's no way it can happen again. And well, I was living proof that not only it happens, but it happens pretty often. And uh, some people say the solution to that is like to keep a backup of a sequence of saves that you can roll back if you ever have this problem or something like that. And I thought since it's an open source software, maybe I could uh, even give a hand and try to replicate the bug, maybe fill a bug report or even why not contribute and try to fix it myself. But then I was wondering, like what kind of design philosophy do you have that your saves could become corrupted in such a way. And that's really worrisome. I mean, I can understand crashes, right? It's a complicated software. There's a lot of stuff going on. And honestly, I've heard that even professional software have a tendency to crash every couple of hours. And so I wasn't worried about this, but corrupting save in such a way that it's not, not like it's not readable or like it was, you know, writing the file and then it crashed and then the file is you know, gone or something. No, no, really like the file is just a jumbled mess of clips that makes no sense. How do you get to that point? The next two editing software that I tried, I found them on a really nice subreddit that's dedicated to NLE editing software. 
and uh, they really provided you, me with a lot of useful information. And if you're a beginning YouTuber or if you uh, just want to edit your family vacations videos or something like that, I highly recommend that you check them out. I'll put the link in the description below this video and uh, be sure to take, check them out because they're full of useful resources and tips and tricks on editing your videos. And they suggest in their fact two video editing software. Uh, the first one was HitFilm Express and the second one is DaVinci Resolve. I tried HitFilm Express first because it sounded like you could do some cool effects with it and it has a lot of features. And honestly, I think DaVinci Resolve and HitFilm Express are probably kind of interchangeable. They're very good software, both of them. Maybe I did like about one video with HitFilm Express and then I quickly switched to uh, DaVinci Resolve. And the reason for that is that with HitFilm Express, I couldn't really figure out how to organize my uh, folders and how to uh, tag videos or put uh, markers or stuff like that. And uh, this is something that's a very, very, very well made in DaVinci Resolve. And I really like it because it allows me to uh, sync or put comments or marker on my videos so that when I'm, when I'm editing, I can say, okay, I'm going to put a B roll at that place and then come back later and add it. And I can see everything I've done. And, uh, I don't know. It, it just felt like it's better to organize your videos. You can change the color of your clips. So you can put a clip like at the beginning, I would, for example, list, uh, a couple of different takes I've done and I I put color on them to say like okay this this clip is probably um, the better clip but this clip is also kind of interesting so I'd put them in yellow or green or red or something like that to try to organize all the different takes I, t I do of my videos and uh, all the different clips that I get out from one single videos and uh, the way to do it in uh, DaVinci Resolve is just it just fits with my way of making videos and I really love their uh, color reel. I mean, it is apparently the best video software for uh, coloring, color grading and stuff like that, your videos. And it does take a little bit of getting used to. At the beginning, I couldn't really figure out how it was working, but um, as I got used to it, it uh, it's very powerful and it really allows me to do pretty much anything I want. It's still probably not as good to do very fancy effects. And uh, you might, you, if you look at other videos I've made, you might have noticed that the text is always fairly simple. I've never used very complex 3D scrolling text with explosions and stuff like that. But um, I guess my videos are not about this kind of stuff. And uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, if I was trying to import like a 3D model in Blender and make particles animation and something like that, maybe HitFilm Express would be better. And it seems like in HitFilm, you can also buy some plugins to do more fancy effects and stuff like that. There's like some kind of microtransaction stuff in there. Um, maybe that's good for you. Um, for me, I really love the usability of uh, DaVinci Resolve and I haven't had many problems with it. Yes, I get the occasional crash. And once I got a corrupted uh, save file, um, I lost one of my timeline. But after hacking the save and trying to open the file in another editing software and, and playing around with it, I managed to get like 99% of the editing I had done. And then I just created another project, copied everything over, and uh, I was okay. It wasn't like in Shotcut where I just completely lost everything. Um, I did manage to get it back. So yes, my save got corrupted. And as also in like maybe 15 videos I've made with DaVinci Resolve, only one of them had issues. And to be honest, I might have been trying a little bit too hard. I was like making timeline inside timeline and trying to exit the timeline of the timeline of the timeline maybe try to stay away from this kind of really heavy editing. If you just have one timeline and a couple of cl clips, maybe some compound clips, it works marvel. And uh, this is my take for you guys. I think if you want to go with an editing software, go with DaVinci Resolve, unless you want to do some really fancy uh, particle effects, animation tricks and stuff like that, then maybe you're better with HeadFilm Express. For now, I think Shotcut just doesn't cut it.
but uh, that's my personal opinion uh, I'm not know what you guys are using of course I haven't used Adobe Premiere Pro so I cannot talk about it but uh, of course if you're willing to spend money uh, that seems to be the one that everyone is using let me know in the comment if you're using this and uh, how it stacks against uh, DaVinci Resolve because for me DaVinci Resolve right now is really the best I could find. That's it for me guys, see you guys in my next episode, have a nice week, bye!